Tonight on Piers Morgan Uncensored, one of the most infamous men in the world, Andrew Tate's misogynistic tirades have been viewed billions of times online. He's now been effectively banned, though, from the internet. He doesn't think that's fair. Tonight, I'm going to try and work out if it is. From London, this is Piers Morgan Uncensored. Well, good evening from London and welcome to a special edition of Piers Morgan Uncensored. Andrew Tate, one-on-one. -on -one. He's the most famous man you've probably never heard of, with billions of views online. At one point this year, more people were searching Google for Andrew Tate than Donald Trump or Kim Kardashian. A former professional kickboxer, he was kicked off Big Brother in 2016 after a video emerged of him striking a woman in what they now both claim was a consensual sex game. He's since made millions as a pornographer and casino owner in Romania, but it's his online videos that have made him notorious across the world posing as a playboy with fast cars, cigars, weapons and cash. He rants about his often scandalous gun. views on women. And or instruct a female to provide sustenance. Cook. So I think my sister is my her husband's property, yes. Tells young men they can get as rich as him by paying for his digital life lessons. I have a hundred business tips I'm going to teach you which will allow you to make your own money instantly. But amid a global media backlash, the net has closed on Andrew Tate. While millions still share his videos, he's effectively banned from the web, booted off Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. To his fans, he's a misunderstood satirist and a victim of big tech censorship. To many others, he's a malicious misogynist. Tonight, I'll try and get to the truth. Well, some of the opinions Andrew Tate shares in his videos are undeniably deeply offensive. We're going to show you some of them on this show. I think you should see them for yourself, not simply hear what he says about them or what other people say about them. Tens of millions of people across the world follow Andrew Tate, and with a big following comes a big responsibility, as well as a public interest in holding his views to account. If outrageous opinions are read aloud, they can be challenged and exposed for what they are. If they're silenced, the person holding these views can become a martyr. So that's why I invited Andrew Tate to come here tonight, and he joins me now live. So, Andrew... Well, welcome, first of all. Thank um, you, you come all the way from Romania to Correct. do this interview. Correct. What, what do you hope to achieve from this interview? Why are you here? It'd be interesting to have a conversation with you. You've certainly been uh, the subject of your own divided opinions in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of people who would say some of the things you say are perhaps dangerous or toxic. Uh, so I thought you'd be a good person to speak to about this subject. I didn't know much about you before this year. Uh, and then I suddenly became very aware of you, as the world did. Because, as I said earlier, you, you, Google, you were the number one subject searched on Google ahead of Donald Trump. Yeah. I don't think it was even possible. Yeah. Why did you get suddenly so popular stroke infamous, do you think? I exploded. Uh, I certainly didn't do that with magic. I've been on the internet for a very long time. I think in the world we live in now, as the other side, the other side, the people who disagree with me, as they get more and more tyrannical in their censorships and their hate mobs, etc., as standard masculine practices are deemed toxic, I didn't put a magic spell on everybody. I managed to uh, accumulate a large amount of affinity with the male populace across the Western world because I'm simply saying things that many men believe, think and feel. The problem, I would say, is I want to play you just a, a, a clip off the top. This is from Joe Rogan. He's somebody I, I absolutely love. Sure. And I think it explains to me what my what I presume my issue with you is going to be, right? Correct. And you, right, you have absolutely got the right to try and persuade me otherwise. Sure. But Joe Rogan said this about you. My 12-year-old and my 14-year-old asked me about Andrew Tate. And what'd you say? What'd you asked say? Me, I said he's a legit world champion kickboxer. I go, I like him a lot. Why do you like him? And I was asking him. And they said he says a lot of funny stuff on, on Twitter and TikTok. Qual he f***ed up with the misogynist. Yes. Because yeah. if he didn't do that, if he just did the pro-male stuff. So I thought that was interesting because when I've gone over everything that's been at the centre of the debate about Andrew Tate, I come down with Joe Rogan in the sense that there's a lot of stuff you say I agree with. You know, I've got three sons in their 20s. It's not easy, actually, being a young male in the modern world. Um, and I think a lot of the things that you say about that uh, can resonate with them. Yeah. The problem comes with the, I don't know, 10, 20 percent or whatever of your output, which on the face of it appears to be blatant misogyny. And when you couple that with your massive influence and huge reach, that is why the social media companies have decided to effectively cancel you. I don't believe in cancellation. I don't believe in censorship particularly. That's why I've invited you to come on the show. Um, 
But I do think a lot of the things you've said are blatant misogyny. Do you, do you accept that? So you made a very interesting point there. You just said on the face of it appeared to be blatantly misogynistic. Mm. I understand that on the face of some of the long format content I've made, if you're going to take a few seconds out of hours, chop it up, put it all over social media, a company with my massive fame, then things can absolutely not be been taken out of context. I do not hate women in any regard. I have no negative relationship with women. No women have come forward saying I've hurt them. I have no criminal record for hurting women. There's no way I can be seen as the face or the devil in regards to how men treat women on, on, on the planet. I'm absolutely not the opposite. I believe in protecting and providing. I've been misunderstood. There's been large contingents of people who have tried very hard to purport lies about me. And, and the, the truth of the matter is I've, I've been producing content for a very long time. Hours and hours of videos been cut down to two or three seconds of clip. Those clips have gone viral and people misunderstand me. That's but I, see, I think you, you've used this phrase and be taken out of context. And I'm not, I'm not sure that is correct in the sense that it still comes out of your mouth. And some of the things Completely. You, some of the things you've said, I just think, are blatantly... Well, let's, do, let, let's do them. Let's, well, let's, let's hear let's, them. Let's go through some. Sure. Right? So you said this about Me Too stroke rape. This is probably 40% of the reason I moved to Romania. In Eastern Europe, none of this garbage flies. You go to the police and say, he raped me back in 1988. They'll say, well, you should have done something about it back then. Yeah, so the point I was making was, obviously, at the height of the Me Too scandal, and also if we look at Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, there's been a lot of high-profile cases where men have been accused of things they did not do without evidence, and their lives have been completely and utterly destroyed. Right. When I say these things, people sit and say that, oh, he hates women. I don't hate women. I think rape is disgusting. I would take a stronger stance on rape than the British government. I think these people should face the death penalty. But to sit and say that women without evidence can go forward and just make up accusations against men, even though they've been repeatedly proven to destroy men's lives at will, is absolutely not. What about a woman who was raped back in 1988 and goes to the police? Then she, sh then the man should face absolute and complete justice. Mm. Uh, the, we but do you in... understand that when that clip appears on TikTok as a clip, and all right, you as a clip, a... completely. Okay, but it's still something that came out of your mouth. Do you accept that when that appears on TikTok, a lot of young, maybe not as smart as you, young men, right, impressionable teenagers, will read that and go. What's he saying is he's saying that rape doesn't exist. No, I, I completely. I'm not going to sit here as a professional and say that I can't be taken out of context. What I will say is that one small sentence you've taken was from a one-hour video where I explained that, of course, rape is disgusting. Of course, everybody should be punished for their crimes regardless of when they happen. But people are not perfect, male and female. And if you give women the opportunity to destroy men's lives without evidence, there's going to be a contingent of women who will do that. I'm trying to make a balanced and nuanced argument in a world where people have no attention span. They're going to take a few seconds put it online, decide someone's good or bad, not be interested in the longer format video, and here I am. No, I'm certainly a person who takes personal responsibility. That's who I am as a person. But we live in a world now with TikTok videos five or six seconds long, there's no content. There's do, you no think, content. do you think women are the property of men? No. The point I was why, making... Why have you said they are? Because I made a religious point. I said that when a man marries a woman, the woman's father walks him down the aisle, walks her down the aisle, and hands her away to the man. Traditionally, this is what it says in the Bible. I'm a religious person. I believe in God. I live in the most so religious world. So you do think the that the woman becomes the men... I promise. think she takes his last name. I mean, let's watch the clip that you said about sure. this so that we can get it in context. So I think my sister is my her husband's property, yes. When a bride is walking down the aisle to marry the groom, the father walks next to her and gives her away. True or false? That, right. but, absolutely. But, but I've, I've been married twice, as it turns out, and on both occasions, I didn't believe that the woman was being handed to me as chattel, as property. It, I, perhaps the way that that... The reason, I'm asked that question repeatedly, and I'm asked in a loaded way. So would you rephrase what you said there? Now, what that's, that's an interesting point about phrasing. The way I would say things before I was famous, mm. I have to take personal responsibility and accept right. that if I make a video that 500 people see and 1% of them misunderstand it, that's not a problem. Mm. If I make a video that 5 million people see and 1% of them misunderstand it... So specifically on that point, I think my sister is her husband's property. She took his last name. She mm. she married him. She wanted to join his family. She has so said he, it herself. Right, so she... she She's still be... a sovereign individual. She's yeah. absolutely not but a sovereign individual. property means that, you, that the husband owns your sister. Listen, my friend, if we want to argue about this, we need to go back to the Bible, to the Quran. You need to argue with religious... No, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about any, anything in the Bible or Quran. I'm but that's what you, it says. No, no, I'm asking you what you think. I think that if a woman marries a man and she decides to take his last name, that they have different roles and responsibilities within that marriage, mm. and I believe that... That's not the question. She is hand... I believe don't, the father... Don't behave, oh, Andrew, I am. The, the father like, hands her... Don't behave like a politician. The father hands her when to you, the man. 
Right, but don't be a politician, because I think you're a straight talker, sure. right? You keep telling me you're a straight talker. Sure. I think my sister is her husband's property. Do you regret saying it like that? I, I understand that with my newfound fame, perhaps it could be phrased differently. However, I still believe that a woman is given to the man in marriage. That's what I believe. Yeah, but not as property. No, the property is the word that other people use when but they ask a, me the question. But as a, a, an equal partner in a loving union, that's what marriage actually means. Sounds it doesn't mean that when you get married, the woman is given to you as a bit of chattel. I agreed. So why say it? I, but that's the way that people ask me the question. People say to me, they ask the oh, question... Oh, hang on, you did. can't blame people for asking you questions. Surely, if you want to be accountable for what sure. you've said, you've got to own your responses. Don't, don't blame the question. I own the response. Let me ask you a question okay. now, and you say something, and then say, well, I shall blame you for asking. I understand, Piers. Piers, I understand. I believe the woman is given to the man. I believe she's given away by the father. I believe she belongs to the man. So you she do, belongs to so the man. So fundamentally, all right, so fundamentally you do believe that a woman becomes a man's property at I marriage. believe she belongs to the man in marriage, correct. Right. I mean, see, that to me is misogyny. And you're entitled to your opinion. Right. But do you, un do you, do you not understand why people think it is misogyny? I understand why some people can be very offended by what I say. What they do is they take a point like that and they ignore all the other points I make the other way around. Yeah, but that's, why I've, that's why I've repeatedly asked you about that line to see if you've changed your position. But the reality is you haven't. It's not about changing positions. I'm a full-grown adult and I stick by the things I say and I'm responsible for them, I which is Which, by the way, is fine. Absolutely. But so, you, what you did say at the start of this little exchange, you said... You know, I wouldn't maybe say things the same way now that I did before I was famous. And yet, actually, you've doubled down and said exactly the same thing. On certain points. So that is what you believe. And that's my point. Yes. I'm trying I'm... to work out... Look, I don't know you. We've Correct. just met, right? Yeah. I'm trying to work out who Andrew Tate is and what you actually believe. I, I don't want to twist anything at all. Then let me make it very, very clear to the camera. I believe a woman is given to the man in, in marriage. I believe that. I also believe a man has a duty to protect and provide for her. I believe a man should lay down his life if something happens or his wife's life is threatened. I believe that men, when women and children first are on the light boat, lifeboats. But men, I believe that men... Like, but a man I, doesn't own a woman. It's not, no, it's... Okay. Unless they literally buy them as a slave. Well, obviously, we're not talking about that. We're talking about religious, biblical marriage. We're talking about something else. Yeah, but I'm, look, I'm a Christian. I don't believe that I, 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 I own my wife. Do you believe your wife was given away to you when she took your last name? I believe that there is a process where a, a father traditionally walks his daughter down the aisle and hands his daughter to this man and they stand there and become a union of two loving so people agree. in a partnership. No, there's no ownership involved. I didn't say ownership. He's not, he's not selling her. The father of the bride isn't selling his daughter. No, absolutely. Well, that's what property she means. It's she not, becomes a member like of a your house, family. is it? I think we're arguing over semantics. That's we're not, though, arguing. because fundamentally, I don't believe a man owns a woman. You do. Well, I don't think a man owns any sovereign individual. I don't think we live in the world of slavery. I don't own any man or any woman. Right. Nobody owns well, When you use phrases like property, that's what you imply. I, that's I understand. What, and so my point again is, you're a smart guy, right? Correct. There's no yeah. denying that. You're yeah. smart, you're a good talker, I've seen a lot of the stuff. But when you, what, what I don't think you quite fully understand... No, I understand very when, well, ..when Pierce. young, impressionable people... I understand ..who are not well. as smart see things like, I think my sister is a husband's property, yes, and you've just reaffirmed that, yeah. that belief, they think that they have the right to own women. I understand that very well, Piers, which That's is why... That's why people think you're a misogynist. Completely. I understand all of this very well, which is why, when you're saying I was backtracking, I'm not. I'm Do you have any regret, though, over the way you phrase this stuff? Well, this is the point I was trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is... When I was not nearly as famous and I was making long format content, I was not sitting there anticipating I'd become the most Googled man on the planet and that a few seconds could be taken out of context. That was not my anticipation. No, but it's I still what plan. you believe. It's what you believe now. So what's the difference? It's not about... It's not, you're asking me... You're saying that young people who are impressed... But you said to me, look, look, Piers, honestly, I've had time to think about this and I wish I hadn't said it. I don't believe that. That's one thing. Actually, you've said the opposite. You said, actually, that's what I think, yeah. I think that when a... So it's a, it doesn't really matter whether you recorded it when you're famous or not famous. It's what you actually believe, right? I believe that a man has a duty to protect and provide for a woman. I believe that a, a woman's father gives her away to the man. That's what I believe, and that's in, in my marriage, that's, that's the circumstance I'm going to live under. If, if people want to live in a different scenario, that's completely theirs. They're, they're prerogative. You, you went on to say about authority over women. If I have a responsibility over I must have a degree of authority. Yeah. For the same reason, if I have responsibility over and people are going to lose their mind, it's an example, an analogy, responsibility over a child, I have to have some authority. Yep. So you, you believe as part of your ownership or your property of, of the woman, you have authority over her? No, I believe if you have... That's what you said. I believe if you have responsibility over something, you have to have a degree of authority or you can't be responsible. Yeah, but authority means, again, that you're the boss. The point I'm making, if you'll please let me finish sure. at this point, the point I was trying to make was talking about the safety of a woman. 
Mm. She was walking alone at night. And I was saying, well, I wouldn't let my woman walk alone at night. Mm. And they said, well, you're not in charge of her. You don't get to decide what she does. I said, I understand. But if I'm responsible for her safety and I'm the person who's burdened with making sure she is safe, I have to have the authority to say, don't put yourself in unsafe situations. The two things are linked. Well, you don't, you don't have authority. You, have the, you, you can absolutely have the right to say to the woman you're with, I don't think you should. But ultimately... If she but, decides, then but, I can't force her. Right, so course. authority implies that you have the ability to control someone. No, authority, believes, uh, the authority implies that I have the moral right to sit and say that that's an irresponsible thing to do and I'm responsible that's for it. That's not what authority means. Well, I'm, I'm not going to... If you think I'm going to lock somebody up in their room, if that's, is that what you're implying? No, I just think, I don't think you know what authority means. I know what it means. I'm saying that if well, I have... a different description of if, what authority if, means. if I have responsibility for her safety, then I have to have the author authority to tell her not to do unsafe yeah, things. Yeah, but authority means that you have some form of control over this woman. I, I think you're trying to... What you're trying to I'm do... I'm only trying to get to what you think. Honestly, completely. I am. Uh, I come with no agenda here at all. I understand. And I'm explaining very, very clearly. Mm. If I have responsibility over said subject... I have to have authority of it. So let me say you have children, right? Right. You have responsibility for them. No, I have, I have legal authority over my children. That is very different to having legal authority over my wife or my female partner. Completely, but the point I'm trying to make... So you accept that? I, I accept that you... Because you used the analogy of responsibility for a child. My friend, these are, these are very... These are actually really important things. They're actually. important things, but you, introdu you, introdu you interrupt me every five seconds, so it's hard for me to actually explain my point. The point I'm making here is very simple. You have children and you're responsible for their safety. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have authority to say, don't go out at night, perhaps, because you want them to be safe. I have legal authority. You have a legal authority. Yeah. Legal authority. I'm saying that if I had a woman, and the, the question where you've raised this soundbite from, mm. I was asked about protecting a woman, making sure she's safe. Mm. And I would say, I wouldn't want her to go out at night on her own because I'm responsible for her safety. Mm. And someone said, well, you don't have authority over her to do that. And I said, well, no, I can't force her to stay inside. But if she were to ask me, how do I protect myself at night? I would say, well, you should stay inside. That's right. how you should do that's, it. I don't have an issue with what So you we agree. Say. No, no. Because, it's the semantics. No, it's not, it's not semantics. And this is where I don't, don't think you quite get why there's a furore over what you say, with respect. Because the semantics point would be if we're saying the same thing in different ways, but we're not. I'm saying to you that when you say I have to have some authority over a woman, I say to you, you have no right to any authority over a woman. You do over a child if it's your child because you are the legal appointed guardian of that child. Understood. You're not a legally appointed guardian or authority over your wife or female partner. Legally appointed, absolutely not. I agree. However, <clears throat> when it comes to things like personal responsibility or personal safety, men, largely by society, are accepted. We're the protectors and providers. We can sit here and pretend that in the world we live in, if me and my wife were walking down the street and men were to come up and try and attack us, I wouldn't be the one fighting. But we both know in reality I would. Right. I have a degree I just, of I, I have a degree of responsibility to protect her. Mm. So if I have a degree of responsibility to protect her physically, then the point I'm trying to make is I will do my best to make sure she's never putting herself in unsafe situations. Do you wish situations. you hadn't used the word she, authority? She, the authority is something that she would give to me. She would come to me and say, so is, but, how, do, how can I make sure no, I'm as safe on. as okay. possible? But I don't want to interrupt you. I just want to point out that's not what authority means. If someone gives, you can, a person can give Voluntary authority. authority is not authority. Uh, no, but that's the point. If it's a not. Woman, Piers, if Andrew, a, stop. Piers, if a woman comes to me and says, I want you to keep me safe, she is handing me authority for her safety. But do you understand the difference between having authority over somebody and somebody giving you permission to have authority? Completely. I never said One I, is consensual and one isn't. But why are we pretending I do unconsensual things? Because you no literally say, I must have a degree of authority. I have to have some authority. And the point about Only if it, I'm responsible for her safety. If I'm not responsible for her safety, position, I don't have authority. If your position now is that with her permission, I would like to have authority when we go out at night to protect her, that's a different That was thing. always my position. But that's not what yeah. you said. But that was always my position. So, so again, I simply say to you, do you... It do you is what I said, though. Do you wish you'd phrased it a different way? No, because we're talking about long format copy where I'm talking about a woman who has come to me and said, you're responsible for making sure I'm safe. I said, well, then I have to make the decisions. When it an 18-year-old boy reads, I must have some authority over a woman, what do you think he thinks? Well, I understand that, and I said this earlier when you tried to say I was backtracking, which I'm not doing. I understand. No, no, actually, I'm not, I don't want to... Okay. I'm not trying to gotcha you. Cool. I'm trying to work out exactly what you I understand think. with massive fame comes massive responsibility. I understand that a percentage of the population are always going to take everything that's said by anybody out of context. Would you change the wording of what you said? Then? No, I would just encourage people to watch my long format copy and understand would it Would you fully. tell an 18-year-old boy you don't have authority over women? Absolutely. Uh, you unless, would say that? Unless a woman comes to him and says, you're responsible for my safety, please make sure keep me safe. Like well, my I see, woman now says, that, Andrew Tate, I can sign up to. Well, then we agree. Yeah, but 
I don't agree with what you said before. Because you're taking a soundbite from a two-hour yeah, conversation. Yeah, but you haven't been taken out of context because I read you the entire sentence. It's very well, you've debatable. ignored all the context around the sentence, my friend. It, you can't ignore a sentence that says, I must have a degree of authority. But you can when the, there's a two-hour conversation where a woman is telling me if she makes me responsible for her safety and me explaining, well, if I'm responsible for your safety, I have the authority to make decisions. Do, so, do yes, you, you've ignored it, all the context. Do you respect women? Absolutely. Why wouldn't I? Do you think that 18, 19-year-old women are more attractive than 25-year-old women? I think there's attractive people. Uh, that's, that's a loaded question. I don't know. Well, it's not really, is it? I, I can't You know sit... why I'm asking it. Of course I do, but I can't sit well, here and for say... For the benefit of viewers who don't know why I'm asking, you said this. In general, this is also one of the reasons men find youth attractive. You want to block the internet? I'll block the internet right effing now. The reason 18 and 19-year-olds are more attractive than 25-year-olds is because they've been through less dick. People say, oh, you can't say that, but yes, I can. A 19-year-old is more attractive than a 26-year-old woman, and I'll tell you why. Because that 26-year-old has talked to more guys, been to the club more times, been effed and dumped more times, more arguments, more mess, more for me to clean up. That is misogyny. Why? Because you are encouraging a mindset about 25-year-old women that makes them sound out to be infinitely less desirable than 18, 19-year-olds and having effectively been having too much sex to be taken in a more respectful way. That would, well, firstly, even if that was the case, that wouldn't be misogyny. But right? what did you mean by what you said? That's not misogyny because it's not anti-women. I'm, I'm saying that an 18 or a 19-year-old woman would be more desirable. It's pretty anti-25-year-old woman. Anti-25-year-old women, we can argue, but not misogyny. Well, that's misogyny. Let's, then, isn't let's, it? No, 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 it's not. Well, being anti any woman at all is misogyny. Not when, I'm, not when I'm saying that women are beautiful and attractive at a certain age and saying that ageist... You're saying 18, 19-year-olds are more attractive than 25 Well, then ageist, perhaps, but misogynistic, absolutely is that not. Exactly, but you just accepted it was misogyny. No, I didn't. You said it was misogyny. I'm telling you, no, it's not. So you don't think if you're saying slightly hateful things about a 25-year-old... That's not slightly hateful. Well, it is. You it's... think you, you'd say that to a woman's face if she's 25? It's not slightly hateful. When so you're... you would go up to a 25-year-old woman and tell her exactly what I just read out? Why would I walk up to a random 25-year-old woman... Because you said it in public on the that. internet, and it's been listened to and watched by millions and millions of young, Correct. impressionable boys. Correct. There was a large panel. There was a conversation. Right. There was hours long of conversation. There were feminists attacking men for toxic masculinity and attacking me and saying things. And I said things back, which were going to antagonize But I think, them. see, I'm... I so, think, which you've done yourself a, a bunch of times. I think dude. a lot of allegations of toxic masculinity are not toxic. Correct. I do think that kind of uh, sentence that I just read out, that, that paragraph, is actually toxic. If you genuinely mean that, and you say you wouldn't say it to a woman's face, but you said it in public about women of that age, I do think that's misogynist. And I think you probably do too. I don't think it's misogynistic. I understand why it can be insulting to you. You wouldn't people. say it to a woman's face. I'd, well, it depends. You're making out like I'm walking around the street going up to random 25. Well, effectively, you're doing it to tens of millions of people online. There's no difference. Not at it? all. We're discussing a topic. We were discussing the, the ideal age of a man. Should, should young boys, right, in their teens, are you comfortable that they would have that mindset? Be I, honest. I think that young boys in their teens lack life experience, they lack nuance. And they need to be very, very careful what they're digesting online, whether it's my content or anybody else's. Yeah, I think you know for a fact millions of them are digesting exactly what you're saying. Completely. The entire internet, to a degree, I think any, any subject you can find, there's going to be a whole heap yeah, of I content. come back to the Joe Rogan thing, Andrew. Is that a lot of what you say, I agree with. Yeah. Right? I do. Genuinely. I've read a lot, I've written a lot of stuff you said. A lot of the stuff you talk about, I think, yeah, he's got a good point, right? Somebody agree about a lot of things. But when I read that kind of thing, I'm like, I just, how much of that is you? How much of that is some act? Do you regret saying stuff like this? I don't. And actually, do you see it as weakness to admit you shouldn't have said something like that? No, I don't live with regret. I think what's happened is that, like I said, long format content, arguments with feminists, arguments with the toxic masculine crowd, arguments with the left, and they're going to take a small clip, small sentence from ours, and they're going to try and paint me as a But villain. I'm not left or right. I don't know what you are, Piers. Exactly. That's my point. No, and, but that's my point. And I understand. <laughs> and, and you're doing exactly as I knew would happen on this interview, which is because you're a busy man. You're not going to watch hours and hours and hours of video. Actually, I have watched hours and hours of video, and I'm going to come to the stuff where I agree with you, and I'm going to come to the stuff about your censorship, sure. which I have issues with. So this is, you know, it's a long interview, right? Sure. I just thought off the top, you said to me, and you were quite bold about it, well, go on, then let's go through these. And you, and you should keep going. I will sit here and stand by what I said. I believe that on man... That, on that, I just read to you then. Yeah. Do you wish you hadn't said that? I understand how it's been misconstrued. I understand how it's been weaponized against me. Do I regret it because it's been weaponized and used against me? Well, that's slightly annoying. 
did That's I, not why did, I want you to Did I at the time mean what I said in, in the context of the conversation, mm. which obviously you, you, you're not familiar with and the people at home are not familiar with? No, I meant what I said. The 25-year-old women, they've just talked to more guys, been to the club more times, been effed and dumped more times, more arguments, more mess, more for me to clean up. Well, there's a whole bunch, there's a whole bunch of context and conversation around that that's been missed. And I, I don't think I'm missing much context. Well, I, pretty... I, I encourage people who are interested to go watch it. Right, but I mean, I've just read out three sentences on the bounce there. I don't think there's any context I'm missing. I mean, you're, you've made it pretty clear what you think about the difference between 18 and 90 year old women. I wasn't talking about myself, even. I was explaining, I was talking with a Muslim guy who was on the panel, and he was explaining how youth is very valid, valued in most parts of the world, mm. and why virginity is valued in most parts of the world. And the feminists were arguing against it, and I was sitting there, actually, very much like you, a mediator between the two, explaining why, in most of the world still today, perhaps not in the Western world, virginity is coveted, youth is coveted in most of the world, and, per, and throughout all of human history. And I was sitting there making the point, explaining why, in certain parts of the world, they think how they do. Well, in even, though parts of the world... even though it's very different to the Western world. So I was making a point, mediating between two groups very similar to mm -hmm. yourself. The conversation has been misunderstood. They've taken this clip of it, and it's being weaponized and used against me. I understand that is because I am now the most famous Google person on the planet. It's inconvenient, sure. But I'm definitely not a danger to women in any regard. Mm -hmm. I date women 25, 26, 27 years old all the time. None of them are offended by the things I don't I'm think saying. you're a danger to women. Of I think that I think the danger, if it, if it concerns you... The danger is the influence you have on young men to have this kind of mindset about women. And that's really where I'm trying to get to what you really believe and how much you've just shot off because you think it's like entertaining and you haven't really given it much thought. And whether now you're a bit older and you've had all the fallout, whether part of you is thinking, actually, if I had, as Joe Rogan says, if you hadn't said stuff like this, you'd probably still be on all these platforms. You'd be massively more popular, massively more famous, massively richer. So I'm really just trying to get to on the blatantly misogynist stuff. Do you yeah. just wish you hadn't said it? With great power comes great responsibility. Mm. It was certainly said before the great power came. It's inconvenient to a degree. However, like I said at the time, with the context of the conversation, I know that I'm not saying things which I believe to be detrimental to the world. However, they've been misconstrued and they've been misunderstood. If a 25-year-old woman was watching this, would you say, I'm sorry for saying that? Well, I wouldn't want anyone to be offended by anything I say. But yeah, I say it, things it, but I, I say things that offend. And this but, is the thing that's interesting, Piers. Please let me finish. Yeah, but are you, again, you're Please. behaving like a politician. But hang on. You can say I'm interrupting. You do. But, if, but you're answering a different question to the one I asked you. So as an interviewer, you're, sure. Be, okay, you're sure. behaving... Ask, sure, okay, let's... Sure, okay, ask. you accept that. Let's accept no we both no got no on. Okay. So, again, my point is simply, if a 26-year-old woman is watching this and has heard those comments, yep. would you just say to her, I, look, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that? No, I won't. I will say that I am sorry that that offends you. However, there's a large contingent of the world... That doesn't and, mean you're sorry. Uh, no, I'm not sorry. That's the point I'm making. I'm sorry if that offends you. However, there's a large contingent of the world that believe that, and I was mediating for a conversation. Parts of the world that believe that about 26-year-old women are parts of the world where women are not allowed out on their own. That's, your, that's a conversation They have to have. wear full burkas. Well, that's a conversation They're not allowed have. to drive cars. That's nothing to do with me. But is right that now. the kind of world for a woman that you... I was, mediating a, I was mediating a conversation. No, I'm asking you what you think. I, I don't live in a country where that happens. You're using that as the excuse for why you're not sorry for saying it. It's not an excuse. Is that there are parts of the world where this is fine. My friend. So my question to you is, well, do you think it's fine? I don't think it's fine. I live in a world where... You don't think it's fine? My, the reason this I... This isn't that hard, Andrew. You can simply say, Piers, you know what? With the benefit of hindsight, I wish I hadn't said it like that. And if a 26-year-old woman's watching, I'm sorry I said that because that actually is blatantly misogynist. And even though that's a view held by other parts of the world, it's not a view I share. Now, I would respect you more if you said that yeah. than if you try and say, well, it's said in other parts of the world, so I'm not sorry. I think you That need, doesn't tell me what you think. Then you need to understand why my content existed in the first place. My content existed because I tried my very hardest to be an absolute and not a realist, especially with uncomfortable truths. Mm. I was pointing out that very uncomfortable... Is that a truth? Thing? It's an uncomfortable truth in many parts of the world. It's not a truth that I'm happy about. It's not a truth I'm creating. No, hang on. You're doing it again. What do you mean that's a truth in other parts of the world? That's what you said. It's not, you're not talking about another part of the world. You're talking about what you believe is the difference between 18 and 90-year-olds and 26-year-olds. I was talking about... It's your belief. I was talking about what the people on the panel believe the difference is. So what do you think the difference is? I think the difference is age. What's the difference, then? Well, then, a 26-year-old's older than a 19-year-old. And so you stand by what you said about talking to the guys, being to the club more times, being left to dump more times. Well, Do you I, believe that or not? No, there's plenty of 26-year-old women who have been with one man or, or virgins, right. of course. So you don't believe that? 
I don't think that the age is the only thing that's going to decipher well, how many men a woman's... But so if you don't actually believe what you said, just say sorry. It's not about not believing what I'm saying. It's about you understanding that there's large conversations going on. I'm just reading context. back stuff you've said. I know and you I'm are. asking you, do you believe it? I believe that it's more likely a 26-year-old's had more partners than a 19-year-old. Right. You don't know that. I don't know that. You're right. In fact, there could be absolutely no evidence for that whatsoever. Completely agree. So why say it? Why stigmatise all 26-year-old women? We're, it's not about... We're repeating ourselves here. We're not really. I'm just trying to get to what you actually believe. I believe that men find youth attractive in general. I believe that in the context of the conversation... 25-year-old women aren't old. I agree with you. They're not. Especially, they're, I'm, I'm old. You're, you know, I'm a lot older than that. Hmm. The point I was making was part of mediating a panel, a conversation between feminists and some Muslim guys. I get it. Okay, I get it. Good. So you, you understand why I said the sentence. But as far as I know, you weren't espousing what a Muslim man might think. You were espousing what you think. I was espousing what the people on the panel believed. But you were saying what you think. Is, is, I, I, I feel like you're trying to pin me down. If and... it's not what you believe, just say, I don't believe that. What part wouldn't I believe? Well, you tell me which part you don't believe. There's the sentence. Which part would you now say you don't believe? I believe that 25-year-old women perhaps have had, because they've been alive longer, maybe have had more partners, but I don't believe that makes them a bad person. Right. But you understand that the way you phrased it makes every 25-year-old woman I understand. feel a bad person. Uh, no, I don't think so. Of I course you do. You're not stupid, Ad. Come on. Piers. Andrew, you're not stupid. You know what that sounds like to any 25, 26-year-old woman. Completely. And you're... Right? So you have maligned every 25 26-year-old woman with that statement. And I'm simply asking you to all those who are not of the type of women that you've described it, are you sorry? I don't want anybody to be offended by anything I say. I want to be a positive force in the world. I don't want anybody to hear what I say and make them feel bad about themselves. Mm. I want all people to live righteous and good, whether they're male or female. And anybody... You lead a righteous life? I think I do, yeah. Do you? Yeah. And you boasted openly of having six, seven partners at once. So is that righteous? I'm not taking a... There's no moral view from me. Simply sure. asking you what you think righteous means. I think righteous is living true to your heart and knowing that you're doing good by people, not snaking anybody, not lying to anybody. I know I live a very righteous life. Have you ever been in love? Yeah. How many times? Uh, uh, plenty. I believe in love between men and women. I'm a I real love, you know. Where yeah. It's, I how, believe, how many times would you say? I, I, enough. I believe men and women are a beautiful union. I think we're slightly different, but when we work together, we're the most powerful force in the world. But how many women have you loved? I don't know, Piers. A few. Give me a ballpark. Five, ten, twenty? Let's, let's say... You don't forget how many people you've been in love with. Let's say ten. I mean, I've been in love, and I certainly believe that men and women, when they work together, it's the most beautiful force on the planet. I believe in family. I believe in children. I believe in... If you believe in family and children and love, yeah. why are you single? I'm not single. Well, you're not married. That's what I mean. Well, if I was married, the last thing I would do is advertise it to the feral psychopaths on the internet. So I'm not a feral psychopath. Well, like, you called me be, friend earlier. Can be debated, Piers. But the point I'm <laughs> the point. But the point I'm making as a whole is that all of these. Do you want to get married? Is my point. No, but let's let's please for a you second. You don't, or you do. Let's please for a second because you've interrupted me so many times. I've failed. To well, actually, I've only interrupted you just to be clear. When you've actually answered a different question. Cool. Well, then on all these points you're and making, you've admitted that on all these points you're making on repeat, you're making you're taking these sentences and on repeat you're using to we you're weaponizing them against me. I'm not weaponizing anything. Okay, it's fine. No, no. The you're point... weaponizing the weaponizing. which no doesn't problem. exist. No problem. But you the... said to me, "Come on, bring it on. Read out all the things that you think are blatant misogyny." All I've done is literally read out all the things we identified from all the research that I thought were blatantly misogynist Understood. and giving you the chance to respond. And the only time I've interrupted you is when you've tried to answer a completely different question. Understood, Pierce. The, but these things were said in large context where often I'm talking about how, for example, on the same podcast where you've read one of them sentences from, I was talking about how it's a man's duty to die by a woman. And the guy asked me, he said, if 10 men, if 10 men with knives attacked your woman, wouldn't you just... I said, yeah, I'd stand and die. I'd never just run away because I have a duty as a man. I must, I must die on the spot to protect her honor and my honor. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a man having responsibility to his duties. I'm talking about the old traditional ways of masculinity. And what happens is a few sentences from such a long conversation is taken and used against I me. I understand that. So, the, so I want you to understand that I'm talking about protecting and providing for women. I'm talking about yeah. a man making sure Do you sure want to get woman... married? No, but this is, we have to, we house all feed into each other, Piers. I'm talking about protecting. That's not a hard question. No, but I'm talking about protecting and providing for a woman. I'm talking about a man being responsible for her safety. I understand. So, of course, I believe in men and women. Of course, I believe in love. Of course, I believe in marriage. Of course, I believe in family. No, but none the of that idea that I don't believe in, <laughs> the idea that I don't believe in these things I is crazy. I didn't ask you if you believed in it. I asked you if you're going to get married. One day, absolutely. You'd like to. If I'm not married already, I would, I will be married one day. If I'm not.
Well, you, you might be secretly married. I, I could be married, correct. Why would you not tell me either way? Why would I advertise to the feral psychopaths of the world who have tried their very best to destroy me for an opinion about my private life and the things that are most sacred to me? Why well, would I do that? You think if you said you were married, everyone would hate you? I don't know people hate me. It's about me understanding that I'm a hard target, but I am very, very protective of the people I care about. Right. But you believe in the concept of marriage. Completely. That's what we were talking about the whole time. What do you think? We I mean, talked about a man giving a woman away. Okay. I believe in marriage more than anybody. In fact, my... I believe in marriage and... No, please. Okay. I believe in marriage in the traditional sense. I believe a man has a duty to stand up and be a real man. I believe that the problem with the world today that we are facing is that not enough men are sticking to the age-old ways of masculinity. Mm -hmm. I believe that me standing up and saying a man must protect a woman and provide for her, so he needs to make sure that she's safe. He needs a degree of authority to I protect her. I have no her. problem with... No, but no, you, but people do have a problem with it. I'm, and that's I'm the, not... Sorry, and that's the world we're in now. Andrew, I'm over here. Sure. I don't have a problem with what you just said. Here's where my problem comes, right? There are a lot of clips of you floating around on the internet, as you know. One of them it has you saying, bang out the machete, boom in her face, grip her by the neck, shut up, bitch. In another, you say, slap, slap, grab, choke, shut up, bitch, sex. When people see those clips and they hear you say those them. things... Agreed. Well, I don't think that... It's not hard to misunderstand it. It is. You might say that it's consensual. Other people would say, whether it's consensual or not, that's a very ugly way to talk about women. Completely. Now let's Hitting watch... them with machetes. No, watch the whole video. It's a girl coming at me with a machete and me saying, here, slap the machete out of her hand. She's attacking me. So you don't understand. This is the exact point. I do the understand. Con... No, people don't watch them in full. And this is actually what's interesting. And please don't interrupt me on this point. Social media has changed in modern times. YouTube five years ago was five, six, seven, eight minute long videos. Mm. Now we have TikTok, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, YouTube shorts, Instagram stories. Now anything you produce that's long form is cut down to very, very short form. They're interested in clicks, they're interested in engagement. They find but the most from all they that. find the most controversial clips they can and Andrew, on purpose. You benefited from all that. Everybody benefits from social media views. Your, as do you. Your was it the hustler? What is it? I called? had an online school. Called Hustlers University. Right. And their whole job was to promote your clips. Make you rich and famous. So you've benefited from this system, the one you now profess to hate. You've benefited from it. I all never that. said I hate you it. You clickbaited like the best of them. I never said I hated it. I'm saying what happened. I don't hate it. I don't hate social media. I think it's a very powerful force. I don't hate the social media. I'm saying the that. The point is, I think you can talk... Look, you can talk to girlfriends of yours, um, maybe a secret wife, I don't know. It's entirely up or to two. You. Or two. Or two. Maybe you've got ten wives. That's your business. I don't care, Right. My only thing is, I don't care what you do in private. If it's consensual between you and another woman, you can do what you like, right? It's your life. I believe in freedom and, and liberty. It's when you say it in public, it's the influence that this kind of thing has on young men. Agreed. Right? And I speak with someone with three sons, right? It's who are, by the way, they're intrigued by you. They're fascinated, right? You're a, you're a big thing in that world of TikTok and so on. So they all are aware of you and what you say. So they're all looking. And when they see things like the machete thing, I get the context because I'm a 57-year-old guy who's been around the block a bit, and I can get what you've said, and you're responding to a particular scenario yep. which you'd created where but, a woman... But it can be misunderstood. I understand. So my point to you is, given that you know it can be misunderstood, do you regret saying things like this on camera where it can be disseminated by less intelligent young males who think that is actually what they should be doing to women? And finally, we get to the point of the issue, which is the point I tried to make at the very beginning. When I made a video before I was famous that got 500 views, me being concerned that 1% of people will misunderstand it was not relevant. Where you start getting 5 million views a video, 50 million views a video, 1% of people misunderstanding it. doesn't change it what becomes you... a, No, it doesn't. But it becomes a much larger problem. I understand. So with great fame That's true. comes great responsibility. Right. So... I agree. Would I... Now that I'm my... famous, yes. do I say things the same way as I did back before I was famous? Absolutely not. Right. As neither would you or nearly any other famous person on the planet. So my logical... Once you become famous, you have to be a lot more careful with how you say things. I understand. So my logical follow-up to that remains... Do you regret then saying it the way you said it? I can't live in regret by saying something before I was famous on a camera which barely anybody watched and then I became famous afterwards. That would be a very asinine way to view the world. Do I can't stand, live in... Do you I, stand by all those things? I can't live in regret because I didn't know I was going to become the most famous man on the planet. That, 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 regret would be the wrong word. Is it, un, is it inconvenient? Sure. But I can't sit here and say, I wish I knew six years ago I'd be the most famous man on the planet and monitored all of my speech forever. That's asinine. You see, but one of the problems that people have with you is that they think you have a malevolent influence on young people. This was the excuse that was put out by the big tech companies. Excuse, oh, excuse being the key word. Well, it may be, actually. You know, I, 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 intrinsically, I have a problem with censorship. 
I don't think Donald Trump should be banned from Twitter, for example, because the Ayatollah of Iran remains on Twitter and other social media platforms. And whatever I think of you, you're not the Ayatollah of Iran, right? So there's, there's a, to me, there's got to be perspective here. And I don't understand the inconsistency by what companies like Twitter, how they treat the, the leader of Iran mm -hmm. and someone like you. It seems to me they're much more draconian on people like you yeah. than they are with people who perhaps should not be allowed platforms. Yeah. Um, but generally, I don't really agree with no platforming people. Yeah. But I think what's interesting talking to you is it seems to me like you have gone on a bit of a journey of self-awareness about the impact of some of the stuff you said in the past and you have said you wouldn't say it again in the same way. Now, you may not want to express regret for that, but it shows me that at the very least you have evolved to somebody who recognises that these can be quite damaging in the way that you said them. Completely. As a professional and as an adult, it would be stupid for me to sit here and say that now that I'm the most famous man on the planet, my words do not have more impact than they did before. With impact, with power comes responsibility, and things need to be worded in a very careful way. Now, when I do a long-format interview, I have to sit there and consciously understand that any 10 seconds of that can be cut and used against me. So I have to be a lot more careful with how I say my words and how I construct my sentences. Of course, we agree with all of that. That's exactly what's happened to me. I agree with all of that. I don't want to be seen as a negative influence in the world. I know that there's a whole bunch of men. I get thousands of emails a week from men whose lives I've saved. Mm. I get thousands of emails a week from men who are on the verge of suicide and have saved their lives. We're talking about... And by the way, I don't dispute that for, at all. You, you have almost certainly, I would think, from everything I've read about you, I think you have certainly been probably able to be very helpful to young men who have really struggled for self-confidence and all that kind of thing, right? Completely. I'm completely prepared to accept that. But there was also, I think, quite a disturbing piece it, that BuzzFeed did. And it talked about the, the negative impact of young, impressionable male minds when they've read or seen some of the more inflammatory things you've said. And they quoted, for example, Sandy, uh, 22, from Washington. My father's gone from a man who minded in women's studies in college, who was kind and in touch with his emotions, treated all people, men and women around him, with kindness, to a man who says that whenever he sees an effeminate male stranger, he gets an overwhelming urge to murder them. He loves podcasts. He listens to a lot of podcasts. I know he's listened to Andrew Tate. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's stop for a second. Let's be professional here, Piers, because you're a professional as yeah. am I. First, she said, did you say that my father went? She said, my father has Her gone. My father. That's a full-grown man, mm -hmm. firstly. So we're talking about my impact on children. You just talked about a full-grown man here. Secondly, I've never talked about murdering effeminate men in anything online ever, on, in any context ever. So I don't know why they have taken some random person I've never met in the world who's full-grown, an adult, and come to their own conclusions who I've never met and lumped his name in with mine. That is absolutely unfair on every level. I didn't watch, I didn't read this what is BuzzFeed. Your view? I didn't read this BuzzFeed article, hmm. but after hearing the first point, I know it's trash. That is complete garbage. What to is sit your, and say what that is I'm the reason this man believes what he believes. I have seen disgusting. a quote from you, and you can tell me what you feel here about this. Sure. Uh, you talk about people don't want to see men dressed up in dressy, I transgender. That's people. not exactly what I said. What, I did said you, what did you say? I said the reason I am so popular and I'm so famous is that there's a large contingent of men who don't want to wear makeup who still want to make money, go to the gym, be strong, drive a fast car, be traditionally masculine, and don't want to be shamed for that, and they don't want to be called toxic for that. That is the reason I'm so massively famous. That is what I said. What say. do you think of transgender people? That's nothing to do with me. I'm not transgender, and I don't understand the issue like they do. They are, can you, do are you transphobic? They... Do, you, are, do you consider yourself that? Transphobic? What, af afraid? Uh, well, it kind of, yeah. You have I, don't live in, I don't live in fear, my friend. I, I, I have no problem. Do you have a dislike of transgender people? I don't know any transgender people. Do you have a dislike of what they stand for, what they are? No. Why would I? I don't I, know. That's I'm not asking. my issue. That's not my issue. And that's actually quite interesting because when I was attacked, a lot of these stupid articles like BuzzFeed, because it's ridiculous, that whole that first point proves anyone with a brain knows that that's garbage. Mm. When they attacked me, they lump a whole bunch of things in together. They say misogynistic, racist, transphobic. They just put them all together at random. No, I'm mixed race. By the way, I, I don't know where they get these. They just get these buzzwords Andrew, and put them in, Andrew, a, in a sentence. By the way, I completely agree. It's and crazy. I've had, and I've had the same thing done to me. Okay. And well, I'm not then. calling you anything. I'm asking you what you personally believe you are. I. It's not an issue I discuss. What I do discuss is so that... So you support transgender people? people trans, I, I support individual liberty. I'm a libertarian. Yeah, so you support transgender people? Sure. Sure, why not? Exactly, yeah. Uh, so, but my point is, as a whole, you're saying that I'm saying I don't want to see men in dresses. I'm saying no. I'm you saying support that, gay people. Sure. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm saying there's a large contingent of men in the world who like the idea of the traditional masculine view of the world, 
who feel happy when they watch 80s action heroes with big muscles and they run yeah. around. And there's nothing toxically masculine about having a fast car and a beautiful girlfriend and making a bunch of money. And being nothing a, at all. Absolutely. And those are the people who are my fans. I and agree. I'm, and I'm but saying... Actually, but the problem is... OK, I'm going to interrupt so, you just to say this. No, okay. no. OK, but this, you're saying that I have a problem with men in dresses. I'm saying no. The people who watch my I've content... I've that question. You've answered. Yeah, but the people who watch my content don't want to see men in dresses. Clearly, I don't wear a dress. That's the point that's I'm making. That's why they're watching your content. No. you're not wearing a dress. No, but that's the point I'm making. That's the point I was making. There's a large contingent of men who are not interested in the things that perhaps the YouTube algorithm is trying to feed I them. I think there are lots of... I, I, look, when you support masculinity and masculine traits, I'm with you, right? Okay, so you agree a man should protect and provide for a woman? I, absolutely. Okay, so you agree if you were walking down the street with a woman, you'd be, you'd be responsible with her safety? Uh, yeah. Cool, absolutely. So if that woman wanted to walk alone... At I don't night, think they, I have authority over the woman right. as we do that. Okay, so let me ask you another question, Piers, because we are professionals. Let's say your woman decided she wanted to take a nice little walk through the south side of Chicago at mm. 2 a.m., and she wanted you to go with her, and you were responsible for fighting and dying on the spot if she was attacked, mm. don't you think you would say to her, no, we're not going out right now, it's not safe? Yes. Okay, so you'd have authority to make the decision. So no, I wouldn't. So I would make, say, so I don't agree. think you should. If she decides to, it's her own volition. Well, if she decides, you're not going to stop her. I have her. no power to stop her. Completely. But you think you do. No, I don't think I have power you to stop her. You clearly do. No, I think I have power to make the decision. I think, no, that's not sensible. So if you have the power to make the decision, you have the power to stop her. Uh, no, because... And that's she... where we differ, and that's why I think it's interesting about you. I don't think you really think through what you're saying. I think through what I'm saying because what, so carefully. Yeah, but Andrew, appears. what you've literally just said is that you have the power to stop no, her. No, I said I don't have the power to stop her. I'm not going to lock her in the room. I'm saying that... So if she a, wants to go on her own... Then she's going to go. Then but you as don't a have authority to stop okay, her. Okay, but as a couple, if we're going to sit there and decide if we're going to take this... You late, asked me, would I feel a sense of responsibility for her safety? Absolutely. Agreed. Absolutely. So, so would let me I finish, have the Piers. power or authority to stop her doing it? No. No, of course not. So let me finish, Piers. You're not going to stop her walking out the hotel. Of course, it's her decision. She's a sovereign individual. Mm. My point is that usually in a couple... People have, you'd sit there as a team and you discuss, and perhaps on certain issues, the woman will know more about X and she'll decide X, and the man might know more about Y and he'll decide mm. Y. So I'm saying if we're as a couple and we're sitting there and deciding, as a couple, as a team, and she says she wants to take this late night stroll, I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to veto this one. I'm going to call but veto do you on believe this one because in... it's dangerous. Right. Which to a degree would give me, in that particular scenario, a degree of authority. If she said, I don't want to listen to you, Andrew. It doesn't give you authority. I, if she says, I don't want to listen to you, Andrew, I want to go on that walk. Then what can I do? I say, well, then I. Then you I don't hope, have authority. Uh, then I hope I wish you the best, I mean, my love. Then you don't have authority. Cool. Then it's a semantic argument. Not really. I think it it's is. It's the complete opposite of what you said you had, which no. was authority. No problem, Piers. No problem. But I think I think Let we me actually. Ask you agree. about what, what do you believe about depression? Do you believe depression is a real thing? I believe that feeling depressed is real. I don't believe depression as a clinical disease is real. No. Really. Correct. You don't believe people can be clinically depressed? I think PTSD is very real. I've, unfortunately, I have some friends who suffer from that. Mm. I know that feeling depressed is real. I believe that the number one power you have against these things are taking, trying to take control of your own mind and affecting your own life. I believe that it's not healthy to hand over all your power and believe that depression is an outside disease that you can't affect. I know that when I've had difficult periods in my life, and also many of my friends, like I've said, suffer from PTSD and been through terrible things, I've lived a very difficult life, and I know people who have, that the things that made them feel better is when they woke up and said, you know what, I'm not going to allow this to damage me anymore. I'm going to take responsibility. I'm going to get up, and I'm going to fight this as hard as right. I can. Right, and I'm, I, by the way, on that, I agree. So we agree. Right? My favourite speech is the Rocky Balboa one. Okay, so then we agree. The no, way, no. What, no, we do. Here's where we don't agree. <sighs> Pierce. You don't... No, hang on. You, you've got to let me sure. interject when I don't agree with you, sure. right? Where I don't agree with you is that there's no such thing as clinical depression. There absolutely is. Well, It's a proven scientific medical reality. There's a different argument about have we gone a bit too soft, right, in yeah. schools and yeah. all the rest of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Do I think some people moan and whine too much about their lot in life? Definitely. Okay. Are we a victimhood society? 100%. Okay. Is there such a thing as clinical depression? Absolutely. So if and, some... and my argument is that if you actually bracket everybody who's not clinically depressed and doesn't have the genuine medical condition, then actually if millions of people are deemed to have depression, the ones who really need the help don't get it. Well, That's that, my point. Well, that, can, that, that I would agree with. You're right. I think it's certainly an overused term. You don't, you don't accept there is such a thing as clinical depression. No, I don't. And that, to me, is a damaging view. OK. Well, let me explain why. If someone comes to me and says, I'm clinically depressed, or I feel very, very sad, 
I would say the first thing you need to do is stop accepting the identity of a clinically depressed person. Stop accepting you have no control over this. And what you need to do is stop identifying that way and let's work together to try and fight but against it. there isn't it. an eminent doctor in the world who would tell you there is no such thing as clinical depression. Who would not tell you that I think, some people I think Johan, is simply beyond I think their Johan control. Hari wrote a book saying exactly that, my friend. He's, but he's not an eminent doctor. No, but he, he's I, a journalist. I said depression wasn't real long ago and was attacked for it. Then Johan Hari wrote a book, which What's actually... What's he going to do with Johan Hari? Because he wrote a book proving me right. Most people... Johan Hari's a journalist. Sure. And, and my point is that a lot of people who are clinically depressed are suffering with something in their life, and if you fix the problem in their life, perhaps they won't feel depressed anymore. No, but, that's not a disease. Yeah, but, Andrew... You're that's what, situational. Andrew, you're simply wrong. If that's what you believe, Piers, it's, it's what not. I believe. I don't believe in things that take power away there from There is them. not an eminent doctor in the world Piers, that would agree with you. Piers, do you I, think you know more than doctors? I can't become clinically depressed. Why do you know? Because I don't believe in it. I can't be haunted by a ghost if I don't believe in ghosts. Well, that's like saying I'm never going to die because I don't believe in it. It's ridiculous. Perhaps. But if it allows me to live a life where I feel happy and content within you, myself... See, this is, again, this is that little area where it's, you lose me. No, I don't lose you. You are, because, because Pierce, but somebody with your Pierce, following says the thousands no of people, thing. The thousands of people who have emailed me saying, my doctor told me I was clinically depressed and it's a disease that I have got in my brain and I can't be fixed. And I started listening to you and I realised that that's not the case and I can fix my own life and you're the only person who has you, ever helped me. Oh, Andrew. Thousands of people have Andrew, emailed me. If, that you exact think, email. if you think you are single-handedly curing people of clinical depression, you are living in cloud cuckoo land. I am reading the emails of people who I have cured of clinical depression. You're reading emails from people who have believed you when they, you say there isn't such a thing, and they've probably never been diagnosed clinical depressed. They just want to go along with what Andrew Tate says. I don't think so. I and think I think your view of that is... that view is dangerous. I, I, I respect that you think my view is dangerous, and I respect you have the right to view that, mm. to think that. I think that clinical depression, I actually agree with you, is massively overdiagnosed. I've already said that PTSD is a very real thing. I've already said... I didn't... Oh, hang on. OK. Again, you're misquoting me. I, I did not say clinical depression is massively overdiagnosed. I said that people who claim to be depressed but don't have clinical depression, I think that is massively overblown, right? In other words, there are a lot of people who just have a bad day yeah. and declare, I've got depression. Yeah. And I, I say, well, have you been to a doctor? Have you been clinically diagnosed? If you have and you have clinical depression, that's one thing. But if you haven't, we could probably work on some mental strength and resilience skills with you. But a, a clinically depressed person has a, a absolutely proven medical condition that is beyond their control. Not according to me and many others, my friend. Well, look, what do you know about it, honestly? I know, I know you're from... You're not a doctor, are you? are not trained, are you? I'm not a doctor. You're not a psychiatrist, you're none of those things. Sure. You're a guy on the make, he's done very well for himself, spouting stuff off, much of which I agree with, as you've seen in the interview, uh, but some of which is ludicrous, and that's one of them. It's not ludicrous. It is. It's not. If you said to me, we're in a victim whose society has got to stop, I'm with you. OK. But the moment you try and deny clinical depression... I believe feeling depressed mm. is real. I do not believe it's a disease that you catch from the sky and you cannot affect. I believe that no matter what happens, I believe you have control of your own mind and you can fight against it. I believe if you change your circumstances in your life, you may feel different. I'll give you a quick example. I had a guy who emailed me saying he was clinically depressed and he was going to kill himself. I obviously am not a psychiatrist. I'm not a doctor. I told him, because I replied to my emails. I said, have you been to a psychiatrist? He said, yes, I'm clinically depressed. I've been on these pills, this amount of time. I'm on antidepressants. Mm. It doesn't work. I said, I don't know what to say to you besides this. And he's, he said he lost his girlfriend. That's why I became clinically depressed. I said, listen, go to the gym. Get a six-pack first. Once you've got a six-pack, email me again. If you still feel like killing yourself, I don't know what else to say to you. But I'd say, strong body is a strong mind. Go train. He went. He started sending me progress pictures, emailing me him getting in better, better shape. And eventually got a six-pack. He's now a professional bodybuilder. And he said, I can't believe I was considering that. I feel so much better, et cetera. The doctor was telling him he was clinically depressed and couldn't cure it. He started taking control of his own life, and now he felt better. Have you now, seen I'm it? not saying it's the case for everybody. No, no. I'm just saying... Here's my question, though. I, I'm Have just... you seen the guy's medical records? Of course not. I just told you the story. So you're just taking his word for it? Oh, I am taking the words of a man who emailed me with a bunch of medication and specific So doses. you're denying proven science because one guy writes to you who you help and you've not seen any evidence he ever had clinical depression diagnosed. I'm denying the idea that... And on the back of it, you go on your, your, your rants in public to tens of millions of people denying something because this guy writes to you and says he had it and you cured him. And I think that's a dangerous mindset, Andrew. That's fine. And that's where you don't have a responsible view of your... Influence over disagree. People. It's very responsible because I'm saving people's lives. I disagree that if you're di if you have if you feel depressed, I disagree mm. that you cannot affect it and change your life and take control and fix yourself and feel happier. I disagree with that. Do you think? Do you think? I, I, re I refuse to accept that there are people out there 
who cannot become happy, contented individuals. I refuse to accept we live in a world where God has created people who no matter how hard they work and how good their life becomes, mm. can't be happy. I don't accept that. I accept that the universe is a very giving place and that God loves all of us. And if you try your best and you work hard, you can become a better person. And I also will argue with you and I'll counter the point that you sitting here on your platform telling people they have clinical depression, there's nothing they can do about it. It's far I more dangerous. That. Okay, well then, if they have clinical why depression- do you mis Why do you misquote me? No, because you're you saying- You hate being misquoted. No, you're saying if people have clinical depression, that I they, they have a disease. I nothing to do about it. They go to a doctor and they get diagnosed cool. and they get help. Then I would argue the point that if it's somebody- It's the opposite of what you just said I said. I would argue the point that if somebody has depression of any kind, whether it's clinical, whether it exists or not, whether they feel mm. depressed or not, whatever, that taking control of their life, taking personal responsibility and working hard is always going to be the positive, best thing they can possibly do for their life going forward. How positive and the people going is around it? Them. How... So sitting here saying, I don't believe in clinical depression. You don't believe in depression. No, I don't. I believe that people can take control and fight against things. Right. I believe in personal sovereignty. Right. Fine. Good. So um, we agree. No, we don't. Yes, we do. No, we don't. You Fears know, are on my side, afraid of being canceled along with me. As we're, I said to you from the start, that's all I agree is. with a lot of what you say. Completely. So we're I, talking but about... I'm taking you to task over the stuff I don't agree with. Sure. And I'm just not sure you understand why it's wrong, which no. is in itself quite revealing. Let me talk to you about Alex. I... Let me talk to you about Alex Jones, right? Who I have a bit of history with. He tried to get me deported from the United States. Oh, did he? Yeah. What is your view of Alex Jones? I think that Alex Jones is a sovereign individual who, very much like the rabid left, deserves a chance to speak on his points of view. I think that the truth on issues is usually somewhere in the middle between two extremes. And I so think, you think Sandy Hook was staged? I don't know anything about Sandy Hook. Really? You know he's just been sued by the families for no. millions and millions. I have no idea. You don't know anything about it? No. So why would you support someone in public when you know nothing about the most infamous When thing have I supported him in public? You have supported him in public. I've been on his podcast. Yeah, but you said nice things about him. I say nice things about lots of people. What do you think of Alex Jones? I said nice things about you, Pierce. That's fine. <laughs> so, so you should, so, I'm a nice person. So the, I, to sit and say that I've been on a podcast and I say nice things about but him But you said you support, support, uh, you support his right to speak about things like Sandy Hook? I don't know Sandy Hook. I don't know. And you know say, what it was? Uh, it was a mass shooting. Of school children. Oh, okay, okay, but to sit and... And he, it's actually, no, no, let's stop for a second. Please don't interrupt me. The, here's why you're, I know why you're good at your job. First, you interrupt people a lot, which is good. It's a good skill. Actually, and, you're very, am, and, you no, no. And, and then there no, you go, no. prove me right. But here's exactly and the timing's what, good. Here's exactly what I do. I only interrupt people like you when you either refuse to answer the question or answer a completely different one. Sure. And I want to remind you of what the question was. Fair enough. Or fair. when you misquote me back, which you've done repeatedly through the interview, where you say, you see, Piers, you agree with me. And the viewer who's been watching will go, no, he didn't. Cool. No problem. The other thing you do is you try and set these traps like now. So you're saying What's now, the trap you think I'm setting? You're saying that I agree with every single point of view a man has. I literally didn't say that. You're saying, well, you support Alex Jones. Why would he, you misquote me? Because you're saying you support Alex Jones and you said he, you've been on his podcast and he said this. I don't know what... What do you think of Alex Jones? I, I don't know everything he said. What do you Pierce. think of him? I think... I think on his podcast, he was cordial. I think he was professional on his podcast. I've also done podcasts with rabid leftists and, and, and people who openly hate me. I do, Is it wrong? I that, do a podcast circuit. Okay. So, it, and I don't know everything he's ever said. When somebody like... And I don't know what... So I don't okay. know what you're trying to say, get me here I'm because I did a podcast. If you let me get a word in edgeways, I'll tell it's, you. It's, it's, pretty, it's, it's, a, it's a lame trick. If you let me get a word in, sure. I will tell you. Let's go. Alex Jones said that Sandy Hook didn't happen. It was staged by actors. Okay. This compounded the appalling grief of the families of those poor 20 children okay. who were gunned to pieces by a lunatic with an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle. They were already grief-stricken beyond belief, and this guy poured petrol onto that grief quite deliberately to make a huge amount of money from his Infowars fake news bullshit. And as a result, a lot of the families have now sued him, and they've won, and he's going to have to pay back tens, maybe hundreds of millions of dollars in damages to these families. And quite right, it won't do anything about the pain he caused them. Some of them actually had people turn up outside their houses with guns because Alex Jones had told them that these parents were making it all up. They were all staged actors. It was all run by the government. So I simply say to you, now I've told you that, what is your view of Alex Jones? I don't see why any of that has to do with me. I, 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 it's very interesting. I've done the guy's podcast. I know him well. He was professional and courteous to me. When I meet somebody and they show me respect, I show them back. Respect. That's what I do, as I did with you. You respect him? I, if somebody shows me respect, I show them you respect back. So if Adolf, I don't Hitler, know if Adolf any... Hitler showed you respect, you'd respect him back? If at the, 
That's a stupid question, Pierce. It's not. It's a logical extension of your argument. No, if, if in 1931 I was walking through Germany and a man come up to me and said, sorry for bumping into you, I'd say, sorry, no problem, mate. Mm. I'd show respect that. What if, I don't know. What, what are you trying to say? That, I, 19... that I sanctioned the Holocaust? You literally just said, if somebody respects you, you respect them back I say, if somebody shows me respect, I show respect back. That's a good way to go through life. Whoever it is. If somebody shows me respect and is courteous to me, I'm courteous back. Yes. How can you respect somebody who calls such misery and pain to sound? I have no idea the specifics of the thing you're discussing. I don't understand any of it. Well, when you I don't know anything about it. You've you do- told me your version of events. When did you go on the podcast? I was on the podcast about four four times in the last four years. I did one so re- four, relatively recently. So four times four times you went on Alex Jones's podcast. Correct. Promoting him, helping him make money. I don't money. think it was promoting and helping him because... Well, it's his podcast. Well, yeah, but I've been on the podcasts of people who absolutely hate me. I've been on liberal left-wing podcasts. I've been on feminist That's podcasts. Fine. And no, you just sat here saying, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I would like you to agree, perhaps we can agree on this point, that I'm not a feminist. I go on feminist podcasts. I do a podcast circuit. I do You're not five, a feminist? I don't know. What do, you think, I, what do you think a feminist is? Well, let's not change subject here, Pierce. Stay on the well, subject. You mentioned feminism. Completely. But you're what trying, to, you said, you're you trying said, to get away from the point because what you did is you're trying to say because I did a podcast, I sanction all of this person's views. And I'm saying I do five podcasts no, a week. I'm I do five that, podcasts a week and I don't sanction 100% the views of any other person on the planet because I'm an individual and he has an individual views, as right. do you. So I don't know why you're trying to come at me would with you, one of his views and pretend that's something to do with it's me. it's a pretty big view. No, but it's, 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 it's a lame trick, Pierce, and you're better than this. So let's move on. Would you? It's lame. It's lame. If Vladimir Putin had a podcast, would you go on it? Uh, Sure. You would? Great. Okay, let me know what you're talking about. If Vladimir Putin had a podcast, I'd go on it. If Joe Biden had a podcast, I'd go on it. If a feminist has a podcast, I'd go on it. If Piers Morgan has a podcast, I'd go on it. If Alex Jones... I mean, I don't see the point you're making. There's no point here. You're just you're digging, but there's nothing to find. Well, I'm not. I'm taking your position that if somebody shows you respect, you respect them. I think that... I'm saying there are lots of people in the world I do not respect. If Vladimir Putin showed me respect... I would not respect him. Well, that's your opinion. But no, no, it's my view. What's okay, your that's view? your view. Well, you're your view is you would. You're sitting here, Piers, saying that I'm on uncensored show, and in your intro you said that it's important that we don't have echo chambers and we have varying Correct. and that we have varying opinions. Correct. But then you're saying the people you don't like, you wouldn't go on their podcast. No, no. So you are a hypocrite. No, no. I'm I will not. go on anybody's podcast and I don't discuss think you any point. I don't think you understand what censorship means, do you? Like a lot of words we've had problems with today. You're just saying you what you're just what saying. What do you think censorship means? No, but the point I'm trying to make here. Hang here. on. What do you think censorship means? Don't hide from the fact that you're saying you will only do podcasts with people you like. Why do you think that's censorship? No, that's your that's your prerogative. My prorogative is I'll just dis- do with censorship. I'll discuss I'll discuss opinions with anybody, and I've done hard left wing. Why are you not asking me about the podcast I've done for the people who are hard liberal? By the left-wing? way, I don't care whether they're left or right. Okay. Extremists to me are all nuts, right? Then we agree. Yes. So perfect. Good. <laughs> Next subject. All right. Here's my next subject. It was a very Jesus. serious case here. Jesus. And and before we move on, sorry, Pierce, but before we move on. I do find it kind of disingenuous, and I know we're on a show, and, and I don't have a personal problem with you, but it is kind of disingenuous to try and sit here and lump me in with something, with some school shooting. That's nothing to do with me. I was, okay. That's nothing to do let with me, me. on I any was, level. Let me respond. On any level. Let me explain. Like you just said, you've been on this podcast four times. In four he, years. Since he said the whole thing was staged. I don't know when he and said I simply, And I think the fact that a smart guy like you wants me to believe... You had no idea that Alex Jones, who's been in the news now for the last two years for being sued by these families for the most heinous thing imaginable of pouring petrol onto their grief by claiming that shooting was staged. The fact that you're pretending you didn't know about any of that. It's not about pretending you've been I didn't... on been on his podcast no. four Pierce, times Pierce. supporting him and making him money. So damn right I'm gonna call you Pierce, out on it. When I do a podcast, if you think I spend time analyzing the point of view that ev- that, of that person and everything they've ever said you should. for years beforehand. It's not years, it was minutes in years most cases. Years and years. That's when did you last go on his podcast? Pierce, you trying to lump me in and attack me for a person whose podcast I do having a view is absolutely childish. Because, okay. because I've done a bunch of podcasts with so people. You would do a podcast. I've done a bunch of podcasts with people who are advocating for things okay. that I do not agree with on every single level. In fact, most of my podcasts are me disagreeing with people. So it's completely crazy that you're trying to lump me in with that. That's, that's cheap. I think that's you, cheap. You are completely misconstruing the point of what I'm saying. I think deliberately. No, no. It, what you're trying is a cheap trick. And I'm just making it clear it's to the audience. It's not a cheap trick. I'm just curious trick. where your line, where your moral line is. It's a cheap trick. I Where's dis- your moral line? I disagree with the points of view with the majority of the people I do podcasts with. So it's a very cheap trick you're trying here. So when I don't people know invent vile things to make themselves rich off the back of families of little kids who've been blown to pieces with a machine gun, 
or a semi-automatic version of a machine gun, I think that is actually a line I, would, I wouldn't cross. I wouldn't be happy to go on someone's podcast when they've been responsible for doing that. It's not about political views or differences of opinion over facts. It's about somebody deliberately inventing a pack of lies to compound the grief of families. And I just, I'm curious, you don't think you have any need to go down any kind of moral quandary about people like that before you continue to allow them to use you for their own promotion. He didn't use me. He didn't use me for Why does he have you on the podcast? Because we disagreed and discussed points like we're doing with you right now. Are Did you, you call are, him out on that? Are you using me? We didn't discuss that. I'm not using you. I'm giving you a platform most people aren't giving you right now to show the world who you really are. Fantastic. So we're, neither of us are using each other. I'm here on your show. I'm providing you with content. You're giving me a platform. And nobody's using each other. It's mutual. We don't agree on a whole bunch of issues. That's fine. And here we are. I think just we've had like, a robust exchange. Yeah, just like I've done on nearly every other podcast. And for, if someone were to come and say to me in the future, there's something, heaven forbid, mm. there's a skeleton in your closet, mm -hmm. and someone were to come to me and say, you were on Piers Morgan's show. Did you know he's X or he's done X? I would say that's absolutely nothing to do with me. Right. But I'm, I'm I make actually, the same point protecting you. I don't, I don't know what you do. Right. I don't know your personal I can guarantee, life. I can guarantee one thing. I will not be inventing stories about I, the families of. Kids I hope you. I school. hope. I hope not. I hope you're a righteous person. I'm but not, I don't I'm not know. claiming to be a righteous person. I don't know. I'm just saying that I just think it's an interesting that you have no moral compulsion about going on people. It's like not about moral compulsions. It's about I don't know what you do, Piers. You could have a bunch of skeletons in your closet, my friend. I don't have a clue. I'm, sure, I'm here on your TV show. I'm sure we all have lots of skeletons. Let me so ask. You, let me ask. Let me ask you this. Interesting about the feminism thing. Sure. Do you identify as a feminist? I think that women and men are. Fantastic. Both of us are fantastic. I think women reproduce. I think women need to be respected, protected, provided for. I think that modern feminism ha is kind of hard for me to even truly understand. What do you think it means? What is feminism? I think that the idea of feminism is that men and women are equal uh, under the law. And do you believe that? Completely. That we should are, be treated we, completely equally. Yeah, but we are equal under the law. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, not really. I think there are still some issues in the world where, I mean, certainly in workplace, the gender pay gap remains. Uh, they're not treated equally in most cases, women? Well, that can be discussed, the gender pay gap. I think that's already been discussed at length. I think that there's actually... You think women should go to work? I think women should work completely. You do? Why wouldn't they? Because in the parts of the country, that, of the world you were mentioning earlier, that have different views no, of women, they don't go to work. In the parts of the world that person from the podcast was from, for the point I made, yeah, they didn't. But th I don't live in those parts of the world. I think women should be free to work if they choose. I think it's very important that... Uh, the family unit remains. I do believe that the most, in my personal view, the most important and respectful thing a woman can do is become a mother. I think that having children is a beautiful thing. Uh, but obviously, if a woman wants to work and wants to have a career, especially now with paternity leave or maternity leave and she can manage to do both, why wouldn't I want women to work? I don't know why anyone would ever assume I don't want women to work or think women can't work because I said that I should keep them safe sometimes. Good. <laughs> it, no, but it's interesting because you have to look at this, Piers. It's interesting how people extrapolate. Andrew said that women, that he's responsible for a woman's safety, and he said that that gives him authority to make decisions for her safety, and that's been misconstrued, and he's a bad person. He believes that women are property. So, but now we believe that Andrew doesn't believe in love. Andrew doesn't believe women should work. Andrew, I don't know where all of that comes from. Well, that's why thing. I'm glad we've had a chance to discuss Completely. It. I believe women are sovereign individuals, and they can make any choice they so desire. I think that it's important that we remember that a man has a duty. I think I certainly in my relationship have a financial responsibility to provide for my woman. My woman would never have to work unless she wanted to because I'm the kind of person who works hard enough that should she wouldn't young have men, to. Should young men though all aspire to be like you? Should young men aspire to work very hard, have no criminal record, become multimillionaires, protect and provide for the women close to them, uh, be sovereign so they can stand up and have their own points of view in face of cancellation? be able to not be mentally intimidated when they go on national TV and there's traps set up for them. Yeah, I believe that confident, strong men who stand up and protect and provide for women are a good thing for the world and a good force for the world. And I don't think that I put a magic spell on anybody. I think there's a whole bunch of men in the world who understands my value. And if, if men grow up to be like me, you're going to have a whole bunch of people with no criminal record, dedicated athletes, who protect and provide for the people close to them, are fantastic for the economy. And, we're, and I'm, not, I'm certainly not the worst influence out here, Piers. You have little Nas twerking on the devil on music videos, which our children are digesting. You have uh, drill artists singing about stabbing people to death in the middle of a knife crime epidemic. You have rabid uh, psychopaths on whether the right or the left announcing violence on the other side. You have all these insanities in the world. And because I sit here and say, I, yeah, perhaps, now you've, you've laid it out and it offended you, I understand. 
I didn't say it offended me. Okay, cool. I just read you the things. You read things that you said they could be offensive and some people are offended. Well, some people definitely were offended. Absolutely. That's fine. And and honestly, I think some of the things you said were genuinely offensive and misogynist. Okay, so they offended you. So like I said earlier, so they offended you, which is fine. I said they offended you, you interrupted me, and now you're saying they offended you, which is fine. And the... But the point I'm trying to make is this. I'm not the devil. There are certainly worse people than me. And I don't disagree and they exist. with that. And, and I'm saying that my core tenets for the people who don't understand me are self-accountability, mm-hmm. so I'm accountable for everything I've ever said. My core tenets are responsibility, so I'm responsible for everything I've said. My core tenets are traditional masculinity to a degree, which involves protecting and providing for women. And I'll make another point. Another point here that's very, very, that's very, that needs to be said. The number of women who have stood up and stuck up for me is ignored. Thousands of women are making videos saying, I've met Andrew Tate, he's such a nice guy. I wish I had a man like Andrew Tate who felt responsible to protect and provide for me. You know what? I I do belong to my husband. That's why I married him and I love him. We ignore the thousands of women who stood up and, and, and stood by me and said everything I said is true. And we're taking a very vocal minority who have taken the things I've said and are pretending to be absolutely and utterly devastated by them okay. for some reason. All right. I mean, time are, out. Time out. Sure. You've had a good, a good run there. Sure. An inquest this week found that a 14-year-old girl, Molly Russell, died from an act of self-harm while suffering from depression and the negative effects of online content. The coroner said she was exposed to material that may have influenced her in a negative way and, in addition, while started this depression and become a much more serious depressive illness, and she very sadly took her life. That's, that's absolutely disgusting. Right. Her father... It's terrible. Her father's campaign for better protections against potentially dangerous social media algorithms, right? It says that the particularly graphic content she saw romanticised acts of self-harm, normalised her condition, and focused on a limited and irrational view without any counterbalance of normality. First of all, what is your response to that? Nothing to do with you. I'm yeah, it's, asking it's, what your response that's the first thing. Yeah, it's, it is nothing to do with me. Uh, the fact that a 14-year-old girl took her life is truly sad. The world we live in today is the world we live in. The, the fact that something like that happened is almost mind blowing to me. That's truly, that's truly sad. I actually feel sad inside to see something like that. This fact that they just said it's romanticizing the gory element. I don't know what mm. she was watching. Some kind of suicide videos thing. Mm. I don't know where these things. Do you are think created. the tech companies should be much tougher about stuff like this? I don't know what kind of things she watched. Obviously. Mm. I have to be a professional here. I think that the tech companies need to do their best to protect people, I guess, to a degree. But it's a slippery slope, isn't it? And then they use this slippery slope to, to silence some people and to... to right, like... and I think, that's a, I think it's a really fine line. And it it's is. a complicated line. It is very you know, I was interested, when you did an interview with The Times, uh, Hugo Rifkin, who's a very good journalist, you did a big interview with him, and it was interesting to me, his conclusion, because he kind of concluded that, although he found a lot of the things he said awful and offensive and he didn't like them and he didn't want to be that kind of person that would say those kind of things. Nor could he actually work out exactly what you'd done which deserves mass wipeout by all the tech firms. I, have I thought it was an interesting conclusion. I don't, you know, I don't know the answer to that other than the reason I mentioned the Molly Russell case, not because that has anything to do with you at all, and I reiterate that. Thank you. So I simply ask you this. What has come clear to me in the interview is that a lot of things you say you wouldn't say now that you've said before. Well, so I'd say them differently, perhaps. You, you, yeah, right. So to me, that's an acceptance, not just that you want to get back on platforms, because maybe that was one of the reasons you, you were no platform, but that you've recognised and understood the potential harm to the wrong kind of impressionable mind by some of the things you've said. Would that be fair? I think that's 80% fair. I recognise and understand that with massive fame, you have to be more careful about being misconstrued. Like I said earlier, 1% of people misunderstanding you doesn't matter with a small audience. It matters with a very large audience. With power comes responsibility. Mm. I still believe the things I say. I do not want to be a negative force for the world. I also understand that I am a man who's lived a very difficult, nuanced life, and I am capable of making nuanced points that may be misunderstood by teenagers. However, that can be said about anybody and everything. Every opinion online can be misunderstood by children. Trying to protect children from the internet is a very interesting subject in and of itself because I would argue that 80% of the content on the internet is can be negative or detrimental to a young mind that doesn't understand the world. Yeah. I'd argue that all of it. We just talked about music videos and dancing on the devil and, Listen, and make, all this stuff. I all think, this stuff is dangerous. By the way, I think you make a very good point on that. So, a lot of these rap stars, the lyrics, the videos, 
I think, far exceed anything that you've been accused of doing. Completely. Because in a lot of cases, some of them promote non-consensual activity with people, right? And I just think that crosses a line you have, as far as I've seen, you haven't crossed that line. No, I haven't. And, I, and this is the thing. And I've been vilified, not because of the things I say, because much more extremist content already exists on the internet. I think the reason I've been attacked and vilified is because of the popularity, because I became so massively famous, not mm. because of what I was actually saying. So as a professional, I analyze that and I understand that, okay, I'm massively famous now and certain things have been taken out of context. However, I still do believe I'm a force for good in the world. And I'm not going to sit here have and Have you say, changed, though? Ch I don't... It's not about changing. Well, I, it is. We're all involved in an evolution. How old are you now? I'm 36. 36, right? I bet you're a different person to what you were when you were 26. Oh, that's, and absolute, 16, that's right? absolutely... That's absolutely a fact. So we all change. And Mike, you, know, you keep talking about being a good person. Yeah. I think if you're honest with yourself, yeah. that you can see why people found a lot of the stuff you've said problematic and misogynist. And I think you've recognised you wouldn't express yourself in that way again because you've understood that it's caused a lot of harm. And that's really, really what I wanted to get to today mm. was an acknowledgement by you that these things clearly were said in the wrong way, created the wrong impression if you didn't mean them the way you intended them, and can therefore have a malevolent influence when you have a huge following. Yeah, when you have a huge following, you certainly have to be a lot more careful about how you get certain points across. That's absolutely a fact. Andrew, I appreciate you coming all the way from Romania. Thank you. It's been an interesting conversation, and I, I thank you for having it. Cheers, Frank. Well, that's it from me. Whatever you're up to, keep it uncensored. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>